Good. Okay. Uh, send me send, send me a copy. Yes, send me a copy of the of the of the recording. Okay, so so I can okay. keep it on my on my archives. Yeah. So, so we are live now. I mean, thank you so much, to Marco Ombad. If I if I'm pronouncing your name rightly. Uh, very good morning to you and our friend from Europe, and good afternoon to all the Indian uh, colleagues and students. Uh, today we are going to have a talk by Jesus Marco Ambar. He is a very sensitive, I would say the first word sensitive, and then a renowned architect. I have been personally known Jesus from last approximately 20 years. Um, just for information to my Indian colleague, uh, why I'm calling him Jesus, not Jesus, because in Spain, Jesus sounds Jesus. So his, he is pronounced as a Jesus, not Jesus. Many of Indian students, they call him Jesus. But uh, like uh, my name in Spain, it's called Rakendra, not Rajendra. So that is the word of uh, uh, pronunciation in uh, Indian and Spain, the variation. To introduce Jesus, he is an architect based in a very, very, very good city called Saragossa, the city between two major cities uh, of Spain, Barcelona and Madrid. Uh, he is an architect by qualification. He studied in Spain and then he also, also studied in America uh, from Columbia University. We have some of our friends who are common colleagues. Uh, Jesus is involved in a number of projects, not only in Europe, he had been also working outside of Europe also, in Africa, in America, and uh, some projects, even in India also, we had been uh, involved uh, earlier. Uh, so to um, this is, uh, our university, Jesus, we are, University called Noda International University. It is a, it is in the satellite town of capital city of India. It's called no, Greater Noida. We are the university with eleven schools. I am the director of a school of architecture. There are there are ten more schools like uh, school of engineering, school of uh, health science. Recently, we added a school of medical, and so on and so forth. We are the largest university of North India in terms of size of the campus and the number of students. Uh, today we have a student mainly from architecture and interior design. Jesus is going to talk about some of his project experiences. Uh, as I mentioned that I really appreciate the effort of Jesus about his design intricacy because I had been knowing his, I mean, his way of working, and I personally visited his office a number of times. He also been to India a couple of times. It has been almost maybe five, six years before when you came. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. That's right. Uh, we have a common friend uh, who is architect and politician and royal family, lot of uh, feather in the cap, uh, His Highness Nawab Kazi Malik Khan. I have requested him also if he can, you know, just jump in for some time, but I don't know whether he'll be able to make it because for your information to Jesus, I, uh, Kazim's son is contesting election this uh, this time and his, his son election is due in next two weeks. So Kazim is quite busy, but uh, we will miss him definitely. And um, uh, we have a student. I, I will request all the students to put your questions in the chat box, or you can send me WhatsApp if any any discussion you would like to have after the presentation. Uh, we will have approximately 30 to 40 minute presentation by Jesus, followed by a 20 minute discussion. So we will have approximately one hour for the whole session. So Jesus, over to you, please. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, this uh, beautiful invitation. It's always a pleasure to 
to speak and talk about architecture, especially with you, Rajendra. I know I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, but uh, it's been already so many years doing so that I assume that you will forgive me. And, and, and certainly I have like very, very strong uh, uh, friendship ties with Rajendra and, uh, and, and I hope to uh, keep, you know, keep them up uh, for a long time. And uh, I will not extend this introduction anymore any longer and I will, I will share my computer screen and start talking about uh, uh, some projects that which I've been uh, lately working on and um, they basically deal uh, about the same issue, uh, which is basically, uh, uh, is, is, is uh, everybody seeing uh, correctly the screen, the presentation? Yeah, we can see. Okay, so the, the issue is about transformations. Uh, uh, when the context seems to vanish, really is architecture what remains. And, um, the presentation is going to last about 35 minutes and, and they have all in common the city of Zaragoza. Those, all the projects are, uh, big, they are built in, in, in Zaragoza, but they are built on the peripheral layer of, of the city. That means that uh, they have barely, they don't have a context to react to. Zaragoza is a, an ancient old town, uh, you can, you can see here the, 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 the historical center with the Roman bridge and a beautiful neoclassical cathedral. We also have like a Muslim castle, uh, and, you know, very close to the historical center. But the projects, which are named by A in terms that they are kind of anonymous because the sites, the, 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 the places where they are built are basically you know, non-referential places. Uh, raises the issue about how do we deal with architecture when the site basically doesn't give us any clue about how to generate form. What kind of, what kind of inspiration uh, do we obtain uh, from a non-existing non site? So that's basically what all these projects have in common. Uh, let's say uh, an anonymous uh, site condition. And the issue becomes then how, how to generate a project, how to generate a form when there are no references at all. It is always easy to, to make a project on a, on a highly uh, identity urban context, but uh, on, 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 on non-contextual situations, I, I, I think it is, it, is, it is quite hard to come out with, with, a, with a meaningful idea. So the first project, it was an apartment building, and that was the site. The only, the only elements, uh, the, only, the only references were those trees uh, which were existing there. And, um, you know, we, we, we came out with, with this kind of process of trying to generate a form out of, out of the, the alignments, uh, the positions of the trees. So through a pixel, uh, a transformation we came out with you know those kind of funny pavilions with uh, rather uh, undetermined shapes which were derived basically by the by the locations and profile of the of the alignment of the trees and you can see uh, down below here the the, the two uh, wood pavilions already built uh, wood because as a reference to the, to the existing trees that uh, were there and, and, and basically were the only uh, reference uh, we could actually react to. Uh, we can see uh, on top the, the existing uh, trees, these trunks, these bold elements uh, as, as the, as the uh, only references on the side and, and establishing also a kind of, you know, spatial relationships between solid and void and, and, and those kind of uh, situations were transformed into architecture by the positions and, and the carved in and carved out uh, uh, spatial condition of the solids that were designed to house the apartments uh, the, of, 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 the, of, the, of the program. 
Um, the plan distribution was uh, quite simple. These, again, these kind of two pavilions, one larger than the other. And we can see on top, you know, the position of the, of the existing uh, trees. Um, and once again, here you can see the, the, the two wood pavilions with the carved in and carved out spaces, trying to somehow, you know, react, uh, uh, transformed, reinterpret the, 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 the spatial qualities that were somehow uh, inherent in the, in the, uh, uh, the presence of the, of, the, of the trees. A closer view of the of the materiality of the tectonic aspects of the of the of the solids and and and, and this kind of you know space between both wood boxes uh, uh, through the through the through the branches of the of the trees trying somehow also to to establish like a, a discourse about uh, the natural integration in in, in in the in the in the environment. We can see here this kind of poetic approach of the of the wood panels that be, which be near the, the, the solid, the, the, the tectonic approach by you know carving in uh, you know those 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 balcony uh, spaces in, 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 in almost like this kind of sculptural uh, effort to 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 in, introduce kind of a dynamism. Into, into the solid uh, wood boxes. Once again, interpreting the, 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 this, this spatial, the space qualities inherent uh, in, the, in the existing tree's condition. And, and uh, another closer view of the other, of the other pavilion. Uh, again, all of them uh, housing this kind of a residential uh, program. And this is another project, another uh, uh, non-referential context. Uh, very few presents uh, to, to, to react to. Uh, there, there are basically no non elements, uh, non -ar architectural or geographical uh, distinct elements to, to, to react to. So basically, the idea become, became to understand the context as this kind of linear uh, horizontal uh, condition uh, with these kind of two planes, two visible planes, and you can see them here with these kind of two lines. You know, if, we, if you stand here observing, watching the context, you almost appreciate this kind of, this kind of frontal condition. So from this kind of uh, interpretation of the site, uh, you know, I, I derived with, uh, I came up with this kind of horizontal building, uh, which, which uh, this kind of sketch, I uh, uh, suggested uh, uh, that uh, the approach to the building should be in terms of this kind of horizontal wall uh, ending up with a, with, a, with a kind of a pavilion kind of piece. And, and this is the building. This is how the building turned out uh, uh, once uh, its uh, construction was finished. You know, the horizontality of the, of the, of the, of, of, of the building, it's uh, obvious. And, and and, and, and in terms to somehow emphasize that uh, horizontality, uh, the, uh, a reflected uh, pond was built right in, in front of it. The, the building is, 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 the program was basically a, a, a crematorium uh, building and, and, and uh, uh, with, a, with a small chapel. Chapel is placed here uh, at the pavilion. And, and it's quite a delicate building, since you know, when, you know, people who visit the building are absolutely um, devastated by the loss of a, of a loving person. So the tranquility, serenity, uh, contemplation—it uh, uh, had to be a building that uh, somehow uh, we call all these uh, all these uh, qualities. Uh, this is the floor plan. Once again, this kind of horizontal bar building with this kind of sequence of rooms to the family uh, to gather together and, 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 and somehow celebrate their, uh, uh, an ultimate uh, goodbye to the loving family. And uh, um, below, you can see the, the section, it's, it's room, it's family room, has a small patio. So uh, it's somehow to, to, to reinforce these uh, a condition of uh, 
of uh, thinking about uh, what what is the meaning of life and, and thinking about uh, uh, you know what is really what the person who 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 is not with us really meant to us. Uh, this is once again the frontal condition of the of the building and the reflecting pond with this kind of uh, flame which we design popping out from the water, almost recalling or resembling the spirit of the of the of the person. This is a uh, you know the, the the front condition also of the of the chapel, uh, which really is a multi-purpose as uh, you know celebration uh, room. Um, and with with this staircase to the roof for maintenance uh, purposes. This is the back condition of the, the back facade of the building, which is mainly devoted for uh, maintenance and, and, and service uh, programs, uh, not open to the public. Uh, this is like once again the, 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 the back facade. Uh, the building is absolutely made with uh, travertine stone, you know, very much used by Ms. van der Rohe. Um, and, uh, this stone comes from uh, Rome, the city of uh, life and the city of death at the same time, this kind of historical city that will never die. So trying to introduce some kind of poetic significance with the material uh, into the facade. This is the interior space, these kind of main corridors uh, to the left. Uh, there is this kind of sequential series of uh, you know, family rooms where, where, where where the family will gather together to say an ultimate goodbye to the loving person. And the idea of the interior space was uh, to somehow use uh, reflected uh, surfaces in order to somehow uh, vanish the idea of materiality and, and, and enhancing the power of the spirit. Uh, the idea was certainly to create a, a kind of a spiritual place where everything seems to float, everything is reflected, and, 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 and the evanescence uh, uh, feeling uh, of, of, of life somehow is represented through this kind of reflecting game of surfaces. Um, each room, uh, each family room, is a veneer by wood, because the idea was somehow to, to, to create on the interior of the, of, the, of the family spaces this kind of warm, uh, uh, wrapper, uh, the presence of wood is, 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 is intimate, is, 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 is warm, it, it gives you confidence. And the patio space with a, with a you know, metal flame uh, somehow uh, trying to announce that you know, the, 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 per, the loving person who, who is uh, not, uh, not uh, with us, uh, uh, somehow uh, his or her spirit uh, lives with us because of, of memories uh, never die, and and this is the the, the the place, the space within the family room uh, where 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 the coffin is placed in this kind of uh, ultimate place, ultimate uh, goodbye to the loving person, and the idea of that space was really to to create a, a, a more than a space, a kind of a cloud, atmospheric uh, uh, situation to somehow introducing to the family this idea that, you know, uh, there is life after death and, and, and that, there is, that there are more possibilities for life to happen. Um, this is the interior of the, of the uh, multi-purpose room or, 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 or chapel, uh, again, made of wood in trying to somehow uh, recall this primitive essence of architecture, you know, where people will, will just gather together in, the, in this, uh, uh, wood huts and, and, and somehow uh, you know be sincere about 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 uh, the feelings that uh, everybody have. So um, with this kind of uh, wood space, you know, the building will we, was was trying also to 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 reaffirm, restate, you know, the, this kind of idea of humanity. And this is another also interesting project because this is a hotel, uh, uh, again, a non-referential site, uh, nothing happens, uh, um, no buildings around the uh, street and a, and, and a big, uh, you know, country space on the outskirts of the city. Uh, you know, the, whole, the building 
had to somehow uh, create its own identity and at the same time become an icon uh, into this uh, 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 bold area of the of the city. So you know these trees that you can see here, you know, aligning, defining the the the, the, the border between the city and the countryside became somehow the issue of the project. So we, through a, through a, through a pixelization process, we came out with this kind of uh, game of uh, squares and, and, and rectangles, one being darker than the other. Um, so, you know, I thought, you know, it could be interesting to create more than a facade, like a, like a tapestry of, of black and whites, uh, trying also to hide uh, the presence of the, of the, of the, Almost 200 rooms, which uh, were present into in the in the in, in the building. So you know the, the the windows, the 200 windows of the of the building are are almost like camouflaged by this uh, pattern of black and whites. Uh, somehow recalling you know the, the 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 pixels of the of the of the picture of the of the of the, of the trees aligned, uh, establishing the border between between the city and the and the countryside. So the facades of the building became this kind of tapestry, you know, this, this, this vertical painting, uh, this, this kind of uh, a QR code uh, uh, representing, again, this, this, this kind of vegetal or alignment, natural alignment of the trees, which were establishing the frontier, the border between the city and the, and the countryside. And uh, the floor plans were uh, basically a, a horizontal platform for the for the ground level uh, with a big patio and a nether shape uh, prototypical and typological uh, form for the for the for all the uh, hotel rooms. And, and this is the result. This is the the building with a big uh, rock, you know, this kind of huge uh, patio space, you know, to design to introduce the line into to the ground floor and, 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 and basement level. And, and, and the idea to, to somehow go from the, 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 the city, the urban context, to this kind of, you know, let's say, a natural or interpreted kind of a building or presence was through this bridge that you can see here, this kind of waving bridge. So you know, the building really, instead of, you know, acting like an like, a, like an, at, at an urban level was kind of acting as an iconic, uh, uh, almost like an accessible uh, object, which uh, will require some kind, some kind of uh, special experience in order to, to get into it and to, and to enter into the building. And you can see here some of the images of the ceramic tiles uh, veneering the facades and you know, creating this kind of game between white and, 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 and black, hiding also the presence, the intense presence of the 200 windows of the, of the building. You know, to the left, you know, the materiality, the tonic of the, of the facades of the object, and to the right, you know, the, this kind of intriguing, waving uh, presence of the, of, the, of the bridge, you know, the bridge, the transition between the urban condition and this kind of iconic, presence which uh, reinterprets somehow the 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 the, 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 the games the leaves the, the the natural condition of the of the trees and the interior also trying to to follow the discourse of the black and whites into the interior uh, decoration and ornamentation of these spaces and and, and also you know, this this other project which is this elementary school uh, on the on the outside on the on, on the on the on, on, on a very special part of the city, uh, which has in common or, or, or its peculiarity is that it is basically a, 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 it was a, a rain train station. So this site, uh, uh, historically an, an old train station and, and, and today uh, abandoned, became the basically the only referential. Uh, historical reference uh, into the context, uh, uh, and uh, you can see the, the the city on the on on the back, creating this this kind of uh, you know horizontal uh, vertical plane, 
and uh, on the front was basically the, the, the countryside. So the building, you know, somehow recalls, recovers, you know, the historical presence uh, since there are there aren't any other references of the of the of the train station and the and this kind of kindergarten uh, building becomes itself like a train like a, this mechanic object uh, 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 this kind of intriguing metal presence for the children to explore um, you can see here the the, 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 the the chimneys which are these light uh, uh, light towers uh, designed to introduce the light into the space, the interior spaces, but at the same time, this kind of you know mechanic, uh, kind of train-like presence, trying to somehow reinterpret uh, you know, the entire building to reinterpret the, the presence, the figure, the mechanic presence of the of the old trains which used to be parked uh, there at the station. Uh, you can see the floor plan. You know how this kind of a horizontal bar building takes place uh, uh, below the section with the light wells introducing light into the interior spaces and you can see here an approach the metal uh, tectonic of the of the of the building with all the uh, uh, sun protections into the light towers at the end trying to work out always these kind of <coughs> metal and uh, mechanic presence, uh, identity into the building. This is the facade which is facing the urban, the city, the, the urban condition, opening into this kind of uh, opaque uh, glass, but at the same time establishing this kind of, you know, in, in, intrigueness uh, uh, about, you know, what's going on on the inside spaces. And the inside spaces, you know, on the other side, you, know, you can see this long, also very uh, uh, transparent, very, a specular uh, space, you know, surfaces are reflecting, uh, trying to somehow uh, vanish the idea of materiality and reinforcing the presence of the of the spirit of the of the, of the people. You know, the, the interior uh, view of the of the interior spaces with this very special uh, 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 room where you know the light comes out almost from the from the from the top trying to establish this kind of to 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 create a sort of uh, materiality out of the of the light coming from the skylight <clears throat> uh, another school which is uh, if the one i just spoke about was a, 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 a kindergarten this was a primary school also on a very difficult part of the city this kind of uh, uh, you know bold and, and uh, countryside uh, space, uh, uh, no references, uh, uh, nothing special taking place. So uh, the scale of the building, which you know was you know quite significant, somehow demanded uh, the, 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 an approach of uh, the party being the building as a city, the building as a small city. Uh, and, and, um, underneath, you can see here these kind of funny uh, shapes, which are basically how this city for very young people uh, are organized. And, and, and then, you know, this kind of presence of folded books, uh, somehow meaning uh, or, or trying to introduce the idea of knowledge, uh, uh, was basically the, 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 the attitude, the party, the idea that. Uh, I tried to, to, to come up with and, and uh, uh, under which the project was developed. Uh, this is the, the, the site, it's most like, like an island, like, an, or like, a, like surrounded by, that, as you can see, uh, non-built em environment. So this kind of city uh, with this belt of uh, streets, uh, became somehow, you know, the combination of these uh, fragments, uh, each one of them trying to house uh, distinct parts of the program. Uh, classrooms, the dining room, the auditorium, and the gym. And this is how you know, the building ended up looking like. Uh, you, know, you can see the, the, the 
the roof, recalling this kind of sequence of uh, uh, bended books you know, piled on, on, on you know, one next to the other. And at the same time, trying to create this kind of village kind of uh, you know, effect uh, around this patio space. So the, 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 the children will, will play uh, safe in, in, in this kind of uh, patio-like space. You can get a closer view here of the, of the, of the patio space, absolutely surrounded by this uh, significant and singular uh, uh, roof uh, sequence of, of, of you know, bended uh, and, and cracky planes. You can see another view here for one of the corners and, and, and you know, the variety, the dynamism that creates this, this, this uh, distinct and, and singular uh, roof, uh, metal roof uh, game and articulation reinforces once again this kind of idea of a small village um, and uh, for the children. Uh, you can see here this, once again, this, 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 uh, you know, this is space between um, you know, the, the classrooms uh, to the right and the, and the patio space to the left. And just you know, a feeling of the interior corridor, which leads to the classrooms, also somehow trying to create uh, windows uh, or lightened by windows uh, of different sizes, uh, um, protected by glasses of with different colors, trying to somehow also create this this kind of uh, you know um, childish. Um, game-like uh, space and, and spirit and, and situation. Uh, this is the gym. You know, all the light coming from coming from these uh, skylights. Uh, uh, also trying with you know following the the, the 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 same issue idea of you know highly articulated roofs and on the interior this kind of pattern of uh, of uh, colors. Uh, you know these. Green and, 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 and white kind of a combination, playing always with the idea of dynamism, since the the, the, you know, the young children usually are like very dynamic uh, people. Um, um, and this other project, uh, which is another school, but this time for 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 uh, uh, older people, for for uh, high school, for for teenagers, uh, the site absolutely non-referential. Uh, but on the but on you know on the distance you know, we, 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 we could, you, you could see the city so at least you know this is the, you, you could feel the profile of the of the boundaries of the site so playing with that pro idea of profile you know the, 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 the idea of the building was to create with concrete this kind of you know uncertain finish of the building uh, trying to once again you know draw a, a uh, bring the profile of the of the of the of the of the city of the boundaries into 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 the profile of the building, uh, trying to somehow uh, recreate in this pure uh, linear T-shaped building uh, the idea of you know uh, uh, urban variety uh, in, in its in its in, um, in its in its top condition. And you can see here the, the frontal and the back facade, the, the, the presence of the concrete, which is being colored by, by pigments, and this has all also been, been, been printed, this kind of linear texture, trying to recall somehow the lines of the, of the, of the, of the urban grids uh, presence on the, on, the, on the city. You can feel the, 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 the the materiality of the concrete, and at the same time, this kind of rusty uh, steel, which it provides this kind of uh, primitive appearance to the to the building. The materiality, once again, very important issue. You know, the concrete and this 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 rusty metal, uh, trying to somehow recognize this this once again this this primitive uh, uh, original condition of the. Of the building in the in the in this in this side and on the interior there is this uh, purity on the on the vestibule space this this white abstract uh, space uh, uh, the staircase to the right the, the the corridors are this combination of colors trying to somehow represent uh, the, the certainly the variety of life the variety of people a uh, variety of trends. Uh, uh, 
it's a way of understanding or, 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 or accentuating the idea also of diversity, uh, the acceptance of what is different, the, the being tolerant. So these kind of games, of course, are basically trying to, to teach the teenagers this kind of, of uh, attitude about accepting absolutely everything, accepting people from different colors, uh, uh, cultures, uh, different cultures, uh, different religions, uh, different ways of uh, understanding life or, or just simply different way, ways of thinking. Uh, the variety of colors as a way to, to introduce, to, 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 to teach uh, the students the acceptance of variety and diversity. And not only that, but understanding that, you know, that variety is, is positive. It's good. Uh, the, 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 the same uh, argument with the with the with the auditorium space. You know, this kind of pattern of different colors uh, creating uh, the, 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 the the walls of the space, and uh, also the gym, the gym, the, the gym building being this kind of transformation between these gymnastic pictures uh, somehow present. Into the into the interior walls of the gym, uh, uh, trying to recreate this dynamic and, and, and funny and, 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 and gymnastic effect into into the walls, and that's how really it ended up uh, uh, being built. You know, some of these kind of black sh shadows representing the dynamic movements of the of the of the gymnastics. And finally, that other building. Um, you know, a non-referential site on the outskirts of the city, uh, no references, uh, no buildings, uh, nothing to react to, just, you know, the feeling, the intuition of creating a little mountain uh, of metal on top of the building. That's how the building end up looking like, you know, this kind of pile uh, of, of solids, of fragments with, uh, made of steel, with uh, steel plates at different orientations, uh, introducing also different kind of greens to create this kind of divers diversity, variety, and determine form uh, the approach to the building, the, the, the game, the dynamic coalition of the of the volumes. You know, the, trying to somehow represent also the uncertainty of nature, the the the, the randomness, the, the the natural appearance. And uh, the spontaneous uh, uh, appearance of, uh, of 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 the solids as 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 a as a, as a way of reinterpreting the spontaneity of of of, of, of nature, the different uh, orientations of the of the metal shields, creating this kind of uh, funny you know game or dynamics into the facade composition and the interior spaces. Uh, the, the auditorium and the gym uh, also trying to come out or, or, or express the same uh, kind of argument as the exterior. And finally, this, this, this staircase, the main staircase of the building, uh, you know, with uh, white walls around it, uh, trying to somehow recall or express the uh, abstraction of, of life, the green uh, uh, top. A veneer to the interior uh, uh, wall that wraps the staircase, making a reference uh, to nature, and the black steps, uh, you know, articulating uh, the way up or the way down to the building, also recalling this kind of uh, uncertain situation in which somehow uh, we are we are living now. Um, 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 and that's it. Uh, thank you for the for your attention, and um, I will get back to you uh, um, Was everything uh, all right? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Jesus, if you can just pause this uh, slide, I mean I though I I would like to make some comment, but I'm also requesting a student to comment. But I really love this this slide specifically because I know that you have a very good sense of photography. You know this. 
this slide although it's a photograph but it looks like whether it's a plan or it's a elevation or it's what but i know it's a cap it's a uh, it's a masterpiece of photography i would really i mean request a student to you know just have a look i mean when i saw it i, I thought it, it looks like a rendered plan but it's not a rendered plan it's a photograph i believe i know it that you photograph yes <laughs> it is a I photograph of the, of, the, of the staircase taken yes. from the top floor yes this is amazing photography i know that you have a very good skills of photography also but this is a very good photograph okay so i would like to just you know uh, before i leave to others for questions or comment i have some you know some comment on my you have uh, discussed number of time in your speech reference and context i know that you had been very very sensitive toward you know the design inspiration this is also i would like uh, a student also to take a note of it that uh, when kesus had been working you know i have personally seen many of his work and visited to his office also he he used almost like eight to ten time the word called reference and context so so when when we have a student i mean they they simply go for design problem and start solving the questions without the reference and, and context i believe that is a very very good sign of a sensitive architect and jesus my compliment to you um you. welcome you have also um, discuss i mean shown your sensitivity about in the project like a crematorium i mean such a very a nice project such a deep thought uh, because if you see in indian context and many of the asian context where architect uh, when the architecture intervention in a project like a crematorium is hardly negligible i mean here you have designed a crematorium a place a with of course i mean nobody would like to go to crematorium of course but uh, that that's a very good masterpiece uh, I remember we had uh, when uh, we met very first time in your uh, uh, Saragossa. You uh, one of your project called uh, that holiday in hotel where you have mentioned about that the windows camouflage and all. And there is, uh, I believe that that was the time when 2006 or seven or something like that when Zaha Hadid was also building a bridge in Saragossa for that Expo project and. There was some inspiration from your project, so we were we were making a joke that okay, I think Zaha Hadid she also influenced by your design, I believe, yes. and that project is also published in Indian magazine also. Yes, you have also um, shown a very good uh, side of yours of a creativity, or I call it an inspiration, in the project of a primary school, the toy and train. I mean, that's a very, very good comment. Because you remember when, when I visited to Spain, I believe with my wife, I think 2011, yes, precisely 2011, because that time we were on our honeymoon tour. Uh, and you took us to that project of um, uh, toy, project, toy and kit. So that's a very, very good. I mean, for the student, it, it is, uh, I would really like to, you know, to take a note of it. This video will be there for online also. So you will have an inspiration in the future also. The very small object twice and a very big object uh, train. So how he, he took an inspiration from those two objects and he converted into building. I have personally, I, I physically seen that building so I can see that it, that's a very successful project. You have also shown your imagination power in a project like a gym, I mean, with the, you know, that sketches and, you know, with this abstract images and which has been converted into religious, I mean, into realized project also. And uh, then, so if I have to summarize your architectural uh, masterpiece, uh, the, I mean, the, the creativity is like inspiration, reference, context. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, how correct I am, or what would you like to give uh, uh, your suggestion for a student? Because here we have only few faculty, most of them are a student. That's the first question. Second question I would also like to ask, uh, 
if i have if i know it well i mean your most of the clients are generally a public i mean public i mean when i'm talking public for indian context i would like to say the public means a, go a government i mean but uh, when you work for government you have a little bit freedom about showing the creativity or stuff like that but when you work with a private client a developer builder they are you know this creativity and all those things are little bit subside because of the they are the major factor is about finance time and um efficiency of the project when i'm saying efficiency i'm i, I mean to say that celebrity of the project i mean you cannot in, in a public project you can think about some project like maybe uh 20 percent area are used for non-usable but in when you go for a developer driven project it's like every centimeter of space is celebrated so you have to be you have to create the more and more celebrable areas so that's where the creativity goes a little bit on a uh, um what you say on a back track so i would like you to comment on these two things your design approach and this developer thing and then i'll have some other question we will also have some question by a student please jesus Okay, thank you, Raj. Well, those are two very interesting questions. Uh, 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 I think um, inspiration is uh, fundamental in our profession, um, um, but it doesn't really come alone. I mean, it's it's it's. Uh, uh, I, I, al I always have I always tell my students that you know in order to to have ideas, uh, you know, prior to that they have to study a lot at school. Uh, they have to study the history of architecture. They have to, 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 to know uh, what buildings are being built nowadays. The, the architects, uh, they have to know about painting, art. Uh, they should really you know, watch movies, uh, interesting movies with literature. Um, they have to uh, introduce into their minds uh, a lot of information so they can establish relationships between, between the arts. Architecture, very, very few times you can find the answers uh, and inspiration only through architecture. You have to, to, to go beyond that scope and try to really get inspired from, I don't know, movies from Visconti or, 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 or books like from Borges or, 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 or paintings from whatever painter you like, Picasso, Matisse, whatever painter you like. But, but, but it's fundamental. For, for, for a person, for an architect, to really have a, a, good, uh, uh, a good mind, a lot of images in, 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 in his head in order to really establish connections. Uh, again, when you deal with a, a, an urban context, I think it's relatively easy to come out with a party, with a project, between existing conditions always or usually somehow leads you to a unique answer. But when you have no references, uh, then they, uh, it might seem initially that you know they, 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 the process of generating form could be easier since no referential sites have uh, no obligations. However, it turns out to be the other way around. It becomes uh, much more difficult because it's kind of you know the, the, the crisis of the, of the white or black paper. When the architect starts a project, just the, the, the white sheet of paper, and you know which line is the first line you, 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 you draw. So really on non-referential context, you have to come up with an idea. You have to get inspiration from, from what you have inside. And the only way to really succeed on that process is, 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 is basically the culture you have. It's, it's really by looking at you, by, by looking at your feelings, your ideas, uh, your 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 likes, your preferences in, in, in literature, in, in, in art, uh, your, 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 the last movie you saw, uh, which you really enjoyed, you know, you know basically you know, self-references that, that you have on your insights. So always, it is very important in architecture, uh, not really copy the others, but really copy yourself. Uh, try to really be honest with yourself. Look at your interior, look at your spirit, and then you know, a lot of ideas will come out. Um, but in doing that, you might come out with, every time I, I design a building, either for the government or either for a private client, uh, I try to come up with an 
an unquestionable idea. If my client uh, understands the idea, then he will probably like it. If he doesn't understand it, he definitely will not like it. I mean, people just, usually you guys like art because you like the art, you understand, and you enjoy the books, you understand. The art, you don't understand, you dislike it, you don't really like it. So, like, likeness, it's really tied together with understanding. Uh, so if you really convinced or make your client to understand the idea that you are pursuing through a rational process, and you also try to uh, convince your client that uh, by designing an iconic building, the commercial success that comes with it will by far uh, go beyond the economic expectations that uh, that building will probably offer. And if you also convince your client that the construction method you are going to use is not going to cost any more money than the one your client is intended to invest, if you really create that argument, uh, you know your client will absolutely have no reasons to say no. Uh, um, you have to treat your clients like children because uh, the person who really knows about that profession is the architect. Uh, and, 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 and the insecurity of the client sometimes uh, adapts the, the, the idea of, of, of a very like bossy, like, bossy character. You know, the, the client like yelling at the architect, I know what to do. But really, what that will really reflect is his, 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 uh, his uncertainty, his insecurity. Uh, when the client is cultured and, 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 and it's a, a, a refined, uh, a cultivated person, he will talk to you like very softly. But when the client has absolutely no knowledge at all of architecture, will try sometimes to, to impose this idea. So I usually tell these people that you know one part of my job is to protect themselves against themselves. And 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 and, and, and that's what I mean by treating sometimes clients as, as children. You know, it's, 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 you know, trying to, you know, slow them down a little bit and, and with uh, patience and, and, and arguments, trying to convince them that, you know, that, that we are right, that we are professionals, we have a lot of experience and, and if they pay attention to our suggestions, they will su succeed. And if they don't, uh, everything will go wrong. So it's a question of, you know, really convincing your clients. Uh, yeah, I think in architecture uh, um, schools, uh, psychology courses will be also mandatory. I mean, it's a shame we don't really teach psychology to architects, but it certainly should be a mandatory uh, a kind of uh, uh, a course to, to, to teach uh, architecture students. And architects, we are required to, you know, know the past, live in the present and predict the future. Only if we do that, we will be able to, to really succeed at our professions. <laughs> Maybe that's why many, just a few people can do it <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's a very good that you you mentioned some point. I mean, I really loved two, two of the term which I, protecting themselves from themselves. Absolutely, this is the quote of the day. I mean, I believe, uh, uh, and uh, then you also, I mean, that's a very good uh, suggestion you made that architects should also uh, be psychologist. I think that that should be there. I mean, you are very right. Uh, I, without mentioning the the name of some architect, I would like to say that there's architect in India, I mean, very renowned architect. I know. I mean, there are people who say that. I mean, before understanding the design brief. I would love to understand the client mind. So then it is more easy for me to design a project rather than knowing the design brief. And that's a, many architects, uh, they follow that uh, system and they know that whom to, uh, whom to approach or whom to give more importance than less importance. For example, we have traveled to Chandigarh a number of times. You know, in Chandigarh, uh, going back to the history of Corbusier, Corbusier knows that he, whatever for any decision, if he has to take, he has to directly talk to 
Prime Minister uh, Nehru that time because he knows that he is the only one who is the decision maker. He is the mm -hmm. only one who, who understands. I mean, because our uh, Prime Minister Pandit Nehru, he also is uh, speak. He used to speak the French language, so so the the same language of Corbusier and Nehru was the same. Yes, yeah, so it. I mean, I agree with you that architect at the same time. He need to be creative, of course, but at the same time, he need to be also a good psychologist, which is a very good for the success of project. Uh, another uh, quote I would like to mention about one of my interaction once I visited in Switzerland and met with Mario Buta. We all know Mario Buta project are always non-contextual, always. You know, take it for example of. Uh, uh, San Francisco, MoMA Museum, or any project, I mean, even in project in to project in India also. So I was discussing with him that why you, you never give, uh, for the sake of word, I can say why you never give damn to the context. He said, he said that I said the context in this. Uh -huh. uh, so that, that is what Mario Bota, of course. Um, Another example uh, about the project of Tom May, uh, La Defense, I mean, that Paris, I mean, again, it is absolutely non contextual. No so called, you can say, the marriage between tradition and contemporary. Yes, I mean, there had been a good example, but I really appreciate your effort of going back to history or looking the site, smelling the site, feeling the site, and uh, another addition which you made today about psychology of client that's very good very commendable so i have i have another i mean some colleague who would like to also add some comments sheena would you like to add some comment or question yes sir so uh, thank you sir so thank you sir for such a valuable presentation i really liked what you have done till now and i found that very innovative in some context like that you have uh, marvelously played with different colors and forms. Like somewhere I found uh, uh, different colors come mixed with different movements of architecture. All that are in one building. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, so that is a challenge in some context because the building should look aesthetically pleasing also. Playing with different colors is not easy. On the same other side, same side, it should look elegant also. So. I just want to know, it's a, get some tips from you that uh, how you manage to do all these things in one single building. Plus, like I'm not talking about, about the forms, uh, to, about the colors or the different movements of architecture. I'm also talking about different forms also. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, um, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Please continue. <laughs> I'm just like. Uh, well, um, basically, uh, once you, you have an idea, uh, it's, it's, it's a matter of uh, carrying through that idea to the ultimate consequences. For instance, uh, uh, in the high school in Madres Partera, uh, which mm -hmm. is the concrete was uh, paint, not, not painted, but tinted, by mixed with uh, pigments, uh, I tried to to create the color of the of the earth which uh which uh which which uh, was, was was there um uh, so, so, so sometimes you have to ask questions to yourself uh questions like uh, you know which is the color of delhi if you were to to define delhi with a color which color mm -hmm. will you will you will you select or uh, 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 you don't have to answer that, but you know, think about it. I mean, sometimes it's like, wow, I live in my in this city, and you know, somebody asks you, which color is your city? Most of the people will not be able to answer that question. Uh, so when you go to a site, uh, because you have to build a project there, maybe the first question you have to ask yourself is, which is the color of this site? Maybe the site has two or three colors. Mm -hmm. So try to identify those colors. Uh, the identification of the colors will really require observation and sensitivity because sometimes the, the, the color of the place is not the dominant color, but maybe it's the color of a small flower 
which has just florist on one edge, and and, the, and it's the only flower on the side. You know <laughs> what I mean? So that miracle somehow has the capacity to to provoke the selection of the color. So most of the questions really they come out from really analyzing the place, uh, trying to pay attention to small details. You know, Miss van der Rohe, you, this, this, this modern architect used to say, God is present on the small details, not on the big ones, on the small details. The capacity that of the architect to really pay attention and detect what for most of the people is invisible is you know, what makes, I think, architects fundamental for society. So it's the way we look um, and, and also you know, the scope of our knowledge, what really sometimes, you know, most of the times, lead us you know, through, the, through the path of, of the design. Have I answered the question? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, you have answered. But yeah, but when we will bring this into practice, then maybe uh, how much we will succeed? Shima, Shima, let me intervene here. Let me intervene here, Shima. You know, when that's a, because you know what happened is that you know many a time what we do that we uh, when we intervene when we uh, I mean add some idea of having a bold color or whatever it is. So, Let's say color is a one element, maybe some some other uh, element, maybe uh, some kind of opening, some kind of uh, you know justification and of you know big arches or whatever it could be any bold species. If we are not convinced about you know the use of that bold decision, could be color or could be anything. Mm. If you are not able to convince the client that okay, whatever I am advising it it is the right solution for the project or it is good for the project as you has discussed before also i mean we we if we have to convince ourselves before convincing the client and to convince ourselves it needs lot of detailing lot of understanding of the project yes we know that many many of the architects not only in india all over europe just for the hack of taking a bold decision, they take bold decision. They may not be the requirement of the project. For example, the project of crematoria, what Jesus has done it. She did not play a very, very bold decision. I mean, it could be anything, not only with the color, but, you know, he did not take a, some bold step for, you know, the if I say creativity, because the project needs simplicity as the minimalistic, because, you know, his of I believe Jesus, you are uh, logging in from your office. This is your office, now. The yes, same office. Yeah. I mean, if you go to his office, also it is the so minimal, so minimalistic, but such an elegant space it is. The same interior you could also see the hotel of Holiday Inn. Also, I mean, it's a black and white, only two colors. And such elegance what he has created. I remember uh, we were talking, Jesus, during the, your presentation in Colombia when you were studying. Your the favorite color was black and the tax over white. I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. So he where he needs to show the simplicity only black and white he does, and at the same time he brings the elegance where he needs to go for very bold color, like for example, in gym and other project of school, mm -hmm. he has done, he, he can dare it, but he knows that where to use it, where to use what. So we will take two more questions now. One, who is coming? Archit, you are coming? Archit. Yes, Please. sir. Yeah. Um, hello, sir. Um, it was a very interactive and a very good session with you up till now. Uh, just wanted to ask a certain set of questions. Uh, at our location in New Delhi, we see public uh, schools or government schools uh, being uh, renovated at a huge pace right now. So I envy your build, uh, building design, sir. Uh, the schools speak a great deal of uh, polished language and uh, a whole community, uh, community's effort uh, is seen uh, to maintain and uh, respect those buildings. Such norms are not existing in uh, India right now. People do take public uh, buildings for granted and they do not have that sense of ownership towards those buildings as their own. 
so what all primitive measures should architects or planners take for uh, to develop a sense of ownership towards these public buildings how can we approach towards a certain set of design tools under which we make the whole community involved uh, to be involved uh, to a school for example quoting an example maybe a child who is getting free from school at 2 pm their parents are coming to pick them up uh, so if the parent is free on a day maybe say uh, he, they are arriving at 1 pm so they can they can uh, they can have a, a, a leisure time of one hour that one hour to be involved directly on the school site as a part of being uh, community uh, as a part of being involved uh, communally so what all measures can one find on a school site where the whole community can be a part of it that's my yeah. question for you. Yeah, it, it's it's a very interesting question, uh, and it goes uh, even 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 far beyond uh, uh, respect the point you you just made. Uh, I, I, really, I'm I'm going to answer your questions with, with more questions. The, the first thing is really what uh, what's what's the intention of the school? Uh, for instance, here in Spain, schools are not on, are, are not only the places where 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 you know the children receive education. But also are uh, spaces for the community to gather together. For instance, the library of the school, uh, the, the library space, the library facilities of the schools that I designed, they are also used by the by the people of the of the town, of the community, of the of the of the quartier uh, where the uh, around the where, where the school is built. The gymnasium, the gym, is also a space which is also used by the by the community. So, you know, really. The, the question is more about understanding that the school should not only be the place or the space where the children receive education, but the opportunity for the community to you know, get together, to gather together, to discuss the problems of the community and, and to close the relationships between the neighbors. And also as a, as a space that will allow integration uh, with less favored people imagine you have immigrants uh, in your quartier in, in, the, in the in the in the city on in the part of the city where you uh, and you have uh, and you want to integrate those those, those immigrants uh, within the society well the school is a, is, a, is a nice place to do it you know, where, where all the family they get together it's the, it's the place to do it so first of all is really to to make a society understand that you know the school is you know goes the responsibility the opportunity of building a school making a school is a very expensive project so let's use it to its maximum power to its, to its maximum potential you know as a, as a, as a, as a not, not as a build not only as a building but as but as a, as a, a place where uh, communication interaction gathering uh, uh relationships between people takes place and the other issue is uh how architecturally the building can provide an identity to the sector to the urban uh, sector where it is built yeah? the first part of, of my of my answer was about the role of the school the second part is the architectural or urban responsibility because maybe the, the, the school can become an icon an architectural icon that somehow differentiates, uh, punctuates, makes, uh, recognizes that part of the city as something special. So, so, so that will require uh, to introduce architectural values derived in relationship with the architectural or 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 or, or an urban conditions that make, which make that part of the city singular and different from the others. If you bring together those two issues, the capacity of the building of the school to become an icon uh, that reflects and expresses the identity of, the, of that part of the city, and if you are able to, 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 to really extend the role of the school uh, far beyond its building condition to a place where human relationships uh, take, take place, uh, then I think you are, you are establishing two big you know, ideas, two big issues, to develop, to work with within the community, and far beyond, you are really enhancing and reinforcing 
you know, that building typology, providing new meanings uh, uh, to, to, towards, towards you know, the, the, the problems of the 21st century. Uh, have I answered correctly your question? Yeah, I, I believe, yeah. you know, I would also like, uh, Jesus, I would also like to give a background about uh, this question because Archit mother is a very senior uh, teacher in school and, and she is one of the very respected uh, faculty in in Delhi I mean in this part of the uh, India you know and I this is a serious concern also why I mean and the question what he has asked that our schools are really I mean why it has it, it is being used only let's say like a morning to afternoon and from afternoon to night it is like a you know closed uh, this thing uh, i believe that there should be some intervention required even post academic time also uh, generally what schools are being used in delhi or maybe in most part of india uh, multi use if i say it's only during the election period uh, when when voting happens then schools become a part of a voting center that is the only what you can say you can say second use of a school that is a very very sad part of indian education side and the maybe i studied in a in a government school in in my city where the schools were being used on weekend for marriage purposes because we had a large ground we had a this thing and all so yes we need to have an intervention of the school not only as a academic place but yes there the thing i believe that i will record some of your clip and i'll share the with the education minister in delhi i think he would love to have your uh, ideas maybe it, it's a nice we will take one more question if anyone has uh, anyone has question please shreya anyone yes sir yeah please shreya last question uh -huh. yeah Sure, sir. Good afternoon, uh, sir. Uh, and um, my question to you is, uh, if uh, I can get to know about the last uh, statements for the all architectural identity you have achieved in your buildings for crematorium, is take for the sincerest examples and to the educational aspects as a school. So, um, if you can uh, give a uh, just a gist of all uh, about your architectural uh, iconography achievements that's all i would uh, really be pleased to know uh, I, 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 i'm not sure if i understand the question you you, you want to know about the achievements of uh, of exactly what uh, uh, sorry say it again yeah, please please can you elaborate it uh, yes sir uh, while uh, you're seeing your designs we have figured out many aspects in like color like forms like spaces so you yes. have achieved an architectural identity in the society and while doing that uh, we have perceived a notion and uh, we can move in and enjoy the parts of your building so how will you define architectural iconography how will i define architectural iconography yes uh, sir I, 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 yeah, it, it's a very interesting question. Um, um, really, mm, the, the answer to that, I will focus it more in terms of uh, uh, absolutely uh, everything that, uh, at least that's the way I see architecture. Everything I, 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 I do, I build, I design. There is always this kind of question about what do I really want to do? And, and, and where do I want to go? What I want to create? And how that is going to be use, useful for the people? Uh, there's a difference between the artist and the architect. The artist can do basically whatever he wants because he has no social responsibility. Okay, he can make a work of art, maybe not being understood by anyone, and he wouldn't care. Uh, his mistakes are small because his paintings and usually uh, his, the, the, the artist's work is, is, is small. It has no social uh, uh, repercussions. It has no, 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 no social consequences. But the architect, we do have a social responsibility. So uh, uh, we are not that free. We are not allowed to do certain things morally, ethically. Okay? Uh, the, 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 the mistakes of the architect uh, are going to be there for a long time, and they are very big. 
because you know buildings are built. So we can't really make as mistakes. That that that's a that's a big responsibility. I mean, it's like we 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 are like doctors, like you know, that, that, like a doctor cannot make a mistake because it, it might cost the the patient's life. An architect cannot make a mistake because our mistakes are too big, and they're going to be there for a long time, and a lot of people are going to see it. So, um, is when 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 I design a building, I'm always trying to provide meanings. To everything I do, the color should have a meaning, should have a, a, an answer to the question of why I am selecting that meaning. Uh, the, the, the materials they have to have a meaning, a significance. The, the space sequence, uh, if, if the materials are uh, creating this kind of reflection, uh, atmospheric uh, effect, it's because something special wants I want to happen there. And those yeah, ideas. Intellectual, pres intellectual presence and I like move um, uh, societal notion and participation. I have seen um, in the uh, designs as well. So, yeah, that uh, you have uh, brilliantly yeah. managed. Yeah, allow, allow him to complete. Shreya, please. Yeah, sorry, sir. Uh, right, all right. And, 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 and the idea is an, an idea derived, let's say, from social content and, and philosophy. I, I cannot really answer to a I, I cannot really, I will never say I've chosen this color because I like it. I mean, I, I think this is irresponsible. I, I will never say I've chosen stone uh, because uh, I like that kind of stone. Uh, and that would be also irresponsible. But for a crematorium building, for instance, you know, it's like when I, when I explain my client that, you know, the stone, you know, it would be nice if it's a travertine stone coming from Rome because through Rome is the city that has no time, that has, it's a, it's a timeless city, it's the city of life, it's the city of death. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the significance of, of, of Rome, it's, 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 it's about eternity, because historically it's like that. So when the client understood that message, that idea, he said, okay, Jesus, you, you're not right. We will do it with, with travertine stone. It's expensive. But I like the meaning of that stone. And, and when the interior space was this kind of polished black stone and, 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 and glass and aluminium, these kind of reflected surfaces, which are also quite expensive material, I have to explain the client that, you know, by doing this kind of game of reflections, what we are really creating into the building is an atmospheric effect far beyond space. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an atmospheric uh, ambience, so you know people will really feel that you know the spirit, the spiritual, the spiritual condition of of, of, of of man and woman exists. You know that there are, that we have a spirit, and if, if if we can build that ambience and make people believe that you know our spiritual condition, it's it's a certainty. Uh, if we can. Uh, Obtain that from architecture, you know, we, we will definitely make people feel good uh, because they will really believe that, you know, there is something else far beyond life. So by convincing the client about that, that, that idea of, you know, designing spaces which may, will make people feel better, uh, the client is translating that into, into, okay, my building is going to be very special, you know, because, I mean, the ideas uh, are behind the building are universal ideas. They are not particular or singular conceptions from you know the peculiarities of one architect, but it's you know the capacity of universal ideas to be built. And 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 so the client will say, okay, I will invest more money on the interior spaces because I really think you know a lot of people will come to this building because it's so nice, you know will make you feel so much better than, you know, you know, it will be more profitable, uh, economically speaking, in the, in, the, in the future. So that's why I think all the decisions that you make in architecture, in, in, in the design process, try to always provide a meaning to them. So the, 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 to, to, to all the decisions, even, even, even the, the door handle where you put, you know, your, your hands to open the door, you know, try to, try to think what kind of... Uh, feeling you want to communicate to the person who will take the, the, the wood handle to, to open the door. You, know, you, you want wood so he feels the warmth 
uh, of the of the of the of the wood in his hand, and, and what shape do you want to provoke to introduce? You want a, 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 a liquid, a could be linear shape, so you know it feels soft and, and gentle into the hand, but you want more. You want more a, a orthogonal kind of shape, so you you know it punches a little bit in his hand. You know, it's everything has to have a meaning. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Shreya, I believe that it answers. Uh, for sure, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, the very last, when I'm saying last, last, I'm just giving a chance to, I mean, I am seeing that there are two international delegates are also here. Kame Salvador and Frank uh -huh. Steel. A very nice a bridge of Brooklyn Bridge. I believe this is a Brooklyn Bridge, New York. So, any questions from any delegate out of India? Kame or am, am I pronouncing right name? Jesus Kame. You are pronouncing the name right. Yes. Kame <laughs> Salvador. I believe. Yeah. I. By the way, I really love Dali. Salvador Dali is like I mean definitely <laughs> one of the very. Greatest painter, I love to. Yeah, if nobody has any question, I would just like to summarize because I know that I mean, we cross almost like a 20 minute more. It's a very nice to start our say, I mean, for you to start your day and for us to finish our day. To have a, this such kind of a global forum, this COVID pandemic has taught a lot of things. The world has become, I mean, totally on their toe, everything is stopped, but at the same time. Thanks to our the innovations in IT or you know the software and all, the global has the globe has connected more than in, than a year back. Today you are sitting in Saragossa and we are connected here. Thank you so much, um, Jesus. On a last note, you know you have raised a very important point about you know this sensitivity about you know understanding about client and then only advising anything which you have which I have. I've been knowing you and you have been doing before also and today's also you you raised that point on more uh, emphasis manner um, but at the same time there is a, some uh, I'll not say a sad but it's something a wrong direction where the today's contemporary architecture is going uh, I mean uh, this architect star terminology, which is something which is killing the the profession of architecture. I mean, the global global mega star are making anything, anywhere, anything what they want. I mentioned about the example of MoMA San Francisco. You know, the signature style of architecture, which last question was talk, talking about iconography. You know, this is a term called signature, my signature. This my signature in India, my signature is America, my signature in New York. I mean, that is the signature style is really, you know, are going in a very, I'll say not right direction. We have taken the, I mean, we have seen the example of a building of Doha by Jan Well. You know, when the Jan Well made a Doha, uh, the yes. tower, and then the another building was by Zaha Hadid, that the stadium project. So it was like a two big mega, mega stars their individual identity crisis answer to not answering the project demand it's answering the you know the symbolic presentation of hadith or symbolic by symbolic presentation of the of the noel so that kind of a thing is also coming there you know the personal identity the personal star attitude or the personal uh, uh, signature is also a picking up, which is a not right time to, I mean, which is a not right for the future, I believe. Uh, this is my personal opinion. Many people maybe agree or not agree. But uh, at this, another point I want to make, I mean, this COVID pandemic from started with China. Then we, then it went to, let's say, on a global, uh, you know, the news is Italy, Iran, and then Spain also. This I'm talking about six months back. Now, I mean, this Corona or COVID has become a very, very big debatable issues. But at the same time, it is also giving a right. I mean, giving a alarming sign that if we as an architect, if we don't get up, it will be too late. It may, I mean, the new disaster may come bigger than Corona. So it's a, everybody's individual responsibility. We have uh, in India, it's called the term called Corona warrior. 
I mean, there are people who are like a policeman, uh, doctors, you know, this uh, municipal corporation people. They they were not in lockdown. They were continuously working. We were in lockdown. We stayed back home, but the police. Uh, doctors and health professionals, they were standing on the forefront. So we salute them, of course. We salute all those Corona warriors. Many of the life we have lo lost. I mean, uh, it's a very, very sad time that, I mean, six months back also, even if we have not come out from the fully the Corona, I don't know what word is going to see in next few years, but it's, a, it's an alarming sign. And here, the responsibility of architects comes very, very important. I'm sure that, as, as uh, Jesus has rightly said, uh, artists or maybe other professionals, they may not have a more impact on the society, but we in architect, whatever we do, there is a big, big, big and big impact. I, I quote one of the ex uh, project example of, again, I go back to Spain, uh, the project of, um, Prado Museum by uh, Rafael yeah. Monio. Monio, I know that you were one of the shortlisted uh, architects for that project, but uh, having said that, when I was there, you know, this um, uh, Monio's style about, you know, this respecting the history, you know, that is something which is, I mean, I, in a way, I do agree about it. Uh, the project had been a successful, but the, if I if I take a quote of that word, we should go for modern, but at the same time we should not forget our history. The reverse example, another project which is again in the in the, I mean very vicinity of the same museum, uh, Rana Sofia, the project by Jan Noel, if I'm Noel, yeah. Yeah, that, which is again he made a, another addition, which is he said that okay the history is this. And my building is going to be a new history. So, so we are. I mean, the the, the example of these two projects of Prado by Monio or Reno Sofia by uh, Nuel, okay. talking a contradiction of each other. Now, this is our uh, our choice, which way we need to follow. We should not forget the history, but at the same time, we should not live in the history. We need to find a very new path. Again, the same path of. Uh, that path which divide both Prado and Rene Sofia Museum is um, what is the name of that road? If I am um, very famous road, of course, it's in Jesus. Paseo del Prado. Paseo, 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 del Prado. Paseo del Prado. So we need to follow that path at least, which is one side is a uh, history and modernism, and another side is history and contemporary. I believe Spain has a lot of things to teach the whole world in the history also and even in the contemporary also and a co a architect like Jesus we are very very proud to have a architect like Jesus in our fraternity of course I mean uh, I will request all the student also to see their see his work I will type you his website his website is if a, if a student can note it's called ama.es America Manhattan America dot England, Spain. So that is the website. So you should see his work. There are a lot of things to inspire to you and inspire the world. And on behalf of all my students and all my faculty, I really thank you so much, Jesus, for being with us. And I wish everything healthy and safe in your family, with in your in this thing. Whenever Corona, I mean, let's say, whenever this travel restriction happened, you come to our school, our university is your home. Anytime you come, we would love to host you. Thank you so much, Jesus. Okay, well, thank you very much to all of you, especially to you, Rajendra. It was so nice uh, seeing you again. It's been a real pleasure to, to have the opportunity to, to talk about architecture, to show you my work. And certainly after uh, this Corona virus uh, goes, which I'm absolutely sure we will overcome this situation, I will pay you a visit and it will be nice to go back to India again and taste that fantastic food that you have and, and feel the colors and the smells and the, and, the, and, and the warmth of the people. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, Jesus, I would, you know, now 
Uh, so, Sheena, I would request if you can stop the uh, recording, please.